right, guys, we are out here at the airport again. <laughs> Hair in my mouth. And uh, today's gonna be fun. I woke up this morning and I had a craving for a one of those like ridiculous breakfast bagels where they put a bunch of crap on it. Um, and the only one I could find was all the way in Myrtle Beach. Unfortunately, that's like a three hour drive away, um, but only about under a little under an hour in the airplane. So that's the plan today. Go get a hundred and fifty dollar or whatever it's gonna cost me bagel. Um, fly out to the airport, get on the one wheel, head into town, get a bagel fly home that's the plan come with me see you guys peace altimeter three zero one one inches of mercury and variable at five zero. favorite the six bro clear the atis at this airport is so frequently wrong not a huge deal because we have a windsock but if you ever want to check the weather from home pretty hard to do check my flight controls like 10 times before it take off Shut off valve on mixture full range elevator trim. All right, next is our run up. We'll do that when we get out there. We have a long taxi, which is kind of nice today because it'll give us time to warm up the end. Somerville traffic Cessna 17048 on the ramp, taxi onto runway 6, Somerville. So yeah, guys, today should be a fun one. I got the back, I don't know if you can see it, pretty well loaded up. Everything's lightweight. It's just, uh, that's the most shit I've had back there. Another cool thing on this flight is that I should surpass, or I will surpass, 100 hours uh, by the time I get home. But I'm at 99, 99 right now. Why is my squelch always messed up? There we go. I'm at 99 right now. What happens when you reach 100 hours? Does your insurance company call you and give you a discount? Another thing I'm going to be hyper focused on today is power um, icing. So temperature on the ground is five dew points too. That's that's carb icing conditions for sure you got a low temperature dew point spread and you've got cold temperatures so airplanes fly good in the cold but uh, you, these, these are things you have to be careful of especially in this plane so definitely check your carb icing and your run up make damn sure it's working and plan your descent uh, way way out so know what you're doing so you don't have to make a rapid descent and pull the power way way back um, because low engine RPM is what another uh, contributor to carb ice so I, that's what I did the last time I was flying and had it. So, yeah, dumb on my part, but glad it happened over an airport and glad I uh, made it through it okay. Story on that in my last video if you uh, have not watched it. So yeah, guys, if you enjoy these videos, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I actually don't know how much that matters anymore. YouTube's getting kind of crazy. Uh, and you can follow me on Instagram as well. Just at Tom Kubot. Much easier and faster to post there than it is on YouTube. Spend way too much time editing video that only 200 people will watch, but that's okay. I enjoy it. Okay, holding short of six. We'll do our run up here. So mixture, full rich. Up to 1700. There it is. Two left. Good drop. Two right. Recovery. One left. Good drop. Recovery. Repeat. Real good drop. Recovery. Green. Steps coming up. Green. Green. There we go. Alright, so my ammeter is a little bit low, so I'm going to take off and go around the pattern first. If that doesn't come up, then I'm not going, but usually that, that sometimes that's low before I take off, so. Radio is 1, 2, 3, nothing. Dalston Approach is set. Flashing beacon is, of course, on. Bring my pitot heat on as well, because it's going to be cold up there. Navigation lights on. Landing light on. During takeoff, I'm expecting the engine to die when it does. I'm going to push forward and find a place to land with no hesitation. Uh, and if I don't see full power right away, I'm not taking off, so I'm not worried about making it halfway down the runway without making that. If I don't make power by the first thousand foot, uh, I'm stopping. Alrighty, guys. I'm ready to go. Somerville traffic, Cessna 17048, taking off runway 6, Somerville traffic. And meters already looking good. Good power. Everything is in the green. Airspeed's alive. There's rotation. Nice, easy takeoff. I like it. Pitch up to maintain 75 miles an hour in this aircraft. That's our VY. We got plenty of room for it. When I went full power, my ammeter came right back up. So that's exactly what I was hoping would happen. I'm feeling good about that. And I've got a real good climb rate, so I should be high enough to make my turn back if anything happens here in a minute, which I don't even consider below a thousand feet. Right now, if my engine died, there is a grass runway right off my right, which is why I like taking off runway six here. It's not maintained, but 
Damn, it's a good landing option. You would survive that, and so would the plane. So we'll go traffic, Cessna 17048, departing off the upwind for 24 out to the northeast, last call, Somerville traffic. Alright, bring back my power, set up for a nice little cruise climb here. The winds on the ground today were scheduled to be headed that way, but then at altitude or at like 2,000 feet or 1,000 feet they switch and go the other way. So I'm waiting for that to happen. Still has not, I still have a headwind and I'm at 1,200 feet. This is my favorite part about flying in the morning, you guys. I don't know why, I just love drinking coffee in the airplane. Actually, it was this airport, and I did my 7,000 foot uh, paramotor flight, and I brought coffee with me. I, I headed to the airport, I'll put a link to the video here, but I headed to the airport, and I forgot to bring fuel. I had like a little bit of fuel left in my tank of my paramotor, and I was like, well, let's just see how high I can get on this. And I just uh, put my coffee, I had like a nice nice coffee cup that seals real well, put it in the pack, or the uh, pocket of the paramotor, and just pinned it until I ran out of gas, or just about got up to 7,000 feet. Yeah, my motor, shut my motor off, and I was above the clouds, and I, I just drank some coffee on the way down, it was awesome. Charleston approach, Cessna 17048, good morning. November 17048, Charles Perch, altimeter 3012, good morning, sorry request. Altimeter 3012 and uh, uh, Cessna 17048, request VFR flight following out to uh, Grand Strand Airport, Myrtle Beach. Uh, we are type Cessna 150, climbing through 2,500 feet, and we are four miles northeast of Somerville Airport. 048, Roger, what altitude are you climbing to? Oh, sorry about that, 5,500 feet, please. 17048, squawk is 5546. 5546 for 048. And everyone 17048, got you now. You are radar contact six miles northeast of the Somerville Airport at 3300. Maintain VFR on course, altitude and climb at your discretion. VFR and altitude are our discretion, on course for 048, thank you. So, yeah, if you watched my last video, I think I mentioned it in there, but my transponder is acting up. The first digit. Um, for my squat code doesn't work. I have to like finagle it to get it to work and that's now the fourth or fifth time someone's told me Hey, you're you're squawking some different number um, So I can always get it to work, but I don't like that um, So that needs to be replaced so I'm on the hunt for a new transponder man. My ears are not popping today so Yeah guys, I'm meeting my buddy Lee uh, He's made an appearance in a few videos before but he is uh, he's meeting me out here Got a one-wheel, too, and he's got an airplane. This is much, much, much faster than mine, so uh, he's, like, headed to the airport right now. He's not even had taken off yet, but he'll probably either still beat me there or we'll land at the exact same time. Smokey up here again, man. They're doing all these controlled burns all over the state. That smoke climbs up here and just hangs, and, man, it kills me. Ugh. That's the one thing I wish I had in this airplane. Well, I wish I had a lot of things, but if... For radio navigation, I don't have a DME. DME is distance measuring equipment. So I can track to a VOR, but the only way I know how far I am from it is to do the calculations manually. Uh, it'd be really nice to have a DME in here and tell me how many miles away uh, I am from that. Oh, some of the DMEs even tell you time-wise. They'll give you a little calculation on how long it'll take you to get there if it knows your speed. It's always good to know how to navigate via radios. I can make it all the way there. Plus I have flight following, so no big deal. Alright guys, the rest of this flight's going to be boring. I'm going to shut off the cameras and uh, try to save some battery. Hopefully we get the landing out there at um, Grand Strain, which is in Myrtle Beach. And uh, I'll get back with you guys. Peace. guys. So we're uh, actually just about to fly over Myrtle Beach International and um, we've been instructed to maintain VFR at or above 3,500. They're vectoring us in for the straight in approach runway 05. So that's got you up to date. We're just waiting on more instruction from the tower. Well, from approach right now. Now they're going to hand us off to the tower over at Grand Strand. So this is something that I'm working on uh, pretty actively, getting more comfortable flying into towered air airports. Um, I do it, 
not, I don't know, I don't do it frequently enough probably, I do it whenever I can, but um, the airport I currently fly out of is non-towered, so I'm obviously more comfortable with that. So yeah, it's good practice. This is a class Delta, so not too busy. Um, but Myrtle Beach International, which is the airport that I'm flying over right now, is Class Charlie. Winds are 050 on the ground, right down the runway. Should be a nice landing at 12 knots, though. There's 4000. 3014 is my altimeter. We're good to go. We're ahead of the airplane right now. Gas, undercarriage, mixture is coming in. Prop is set. Switches are set. Seatbelts are on. We're actually ready to land already, so that's where I want to be. 170482, we're heading 090 and join the shoreline. Track it inbound. Uh, right to zero nine or zero, and we'll track the shoreline inbound for zero four eight. No, four Mike Romeo, keep your speed up. You're going to be number one, descend and maintain two thousand. Zero nine or zero, and then track the shoreline. So as soon as I cross the shoreline, I'm going to turn in. My ears are not popping, and it is fucking with my head. Ah. No zero four eight, maintain VFR at three thousand. VFR at three thousand zero four eight. Uh, she's got us on the straighter approach for zero five. Proved down to three thousand feet. Beautiful man. NMR 048, reduce speed 20 knots if able. Uh, reducing speed 20 knots uh, for 048. No, 17048, traffic to follow is going to be at your 10 o'clock and 12 miles. King Air descending through 3,600. You can cancel altitude restrictions. I will look for the traffic and no altitude restrictions for 048. No, for Mike Romeo, airport 11 o'clock and 10 miles. All right, so she's slowing us down as so about as slow as I can go. I mean, I can slow down more, but I, I don't want to bog the engine down that low. Uh, but we're on final for 05, so I'm expecting tower on uh, 124.6. Got that tuned in. November 17048, contact Grand Strand Tower, 124.6. Good day. Order tower, 124.6, thank you. Grand Strand Tower, uh, Cessna 17048, uh, 10 mile final runway 05, descending through three or 2,800 feet with Sierra to land. Cessna 048, Roger, proceed straight on runway 5, and continue to be number 2, you're following a King Air on the left face coming from the north, I'll show you traffic short. Roger that, we're number 2, and we'll look out for the traffic, 048. King Air 4 Mike Romeo, keep it tight as big as you can, traffic on the final to follow. 4 Mike Romeo, Roger. Alright, so we're following a King Air. Uh, he's on a I want to slow down. He's on a base over there. Flying with the big boys, guys. One day I'll be flying one of those. Oh, my left ear is not popping and it's like, ah. Uh. So 048, you're trapped. Uh, King Air is at 11 o'clock, three miles, on the base, sitting out of 1,600. Look up for traffic, 048. So 048, 11 o'clock, two miles, at 1,000. Uh, this for, we just got the traffic in sight for 048. Uh, we're slowed down as much as we can here. Yeah, you're still twice as fast as you are. Your space should be good. Follow the King Air runway 5, number 2, clear to land. Wind is 050 at 12, gust 18. Number 2 behind the King Air, clear to land, runway 05 for 048. Alright, guys, so I got the King Air in sight. He's way up there. Gonna keep this amount of flaps in and a little more throttle and pitch the nose down. Get my speed up just a hair. Careful not to exceed my uh, flap speed of 100 miles per hour. I've got that King Air right in my sights. I don't know why I said that. Not a fighter jet. <laughs> All right, gas is on. Undercarriage is welded. Mixture, full rich, prop, set, always. Switches are set, seatbelts are on. We're good to land, guys. Get down there. All right, two miles out. I don't know if you guys can hear uh, that talking to you, probably not. But 4th flight always gives you updates and alerts. Pretty nice. Two mile final, one of my 05. Man, my eardrum feels like it's about to explode. Ah, that is one thing about this airplane. Cessna 150. Everything happens in slow motion, man. Which is good for learning. But this is, this final is, feels like it's taking forever. Alright, I'm gonna start reducing my speed, bringing my last notch of flaps here. This is 048, turn right at Alpha 2, taxi ramp via Alpha and Bravo on this frequency. Right at Alpha 2 and then taxi via Alpha Bravo remain this frequency 048. Alright, my eardrum is officially about to explode. Um...
I've got clearance to taxi via Alpha at Bravo. Uh, Bravo's over there. Look right, left, we're clear. Oh my god. Oh shit, dude. This hurts. Alright guys, well we made it. Uh, my ear is killing me. And, um, yeah. That's about it. Let's go get a bagel. That I'm not good at. Why is that? That's perfect. I called you. I called you. I was already flying when you called me. Here. All right. We bitched out. We got a courtesy car instead. It's too cold to ride one wheel, so. We will ride our one wheels to the courtesy car, though. That's right. Is it the Ford Escape with the lights on top? Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm turning those babies on for sure. Nice. The cars I've seen. <laughs> this is nice. One wheel storage in the back. Fire extinguisher. Shit gets hairy. God, yeah, these Ford Escapes, they, they start on fire. <laughs> oh. Is there something else I can help with? All right. Oh, look at the digs here. We got a radio. I'm guessing these are for the. Wait, check it. <laughs> Hit the button. All right, that's white button. Oh, we're flashing. <laughs> <laughs> we got lights, some crud, <laughs> free water. That's nice. <laughs> All right, where are we going? I don't know. That would have been a little bit of a hike. Yeah, that would have, we'd have been frozen. Courtesy yeah. car was a good choice. Yeah, it's just not an easy ride. You gotta go over the sidewalk. Yeah. Thank Ooh, you, buddy. sir. Morning. 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 I do a uh, ham, egg, and cheese on Asiago. That's why those guys always make those big mine. Well, that was delicious. Called Crave Bagel in uh, North Middle Beach. Hi right, guys, just got all paid up at the FBO. I got fuel, and I think that's it. Yeah, there was a $15 ramp fee here, uh, but if you buy fuel or top off, they waive that fee. So ended up being 38 bucks. Took 6.7 gallons, so I burned almost six gallons an hour on the way here. Gave me a free water. Can't beat it. We're gonna head out to another airport locally and then I'm gonna fly home after that. But he's way faster, so I'm getting in the air first. Cameras are gonna die. I don't know why I'm telling y'all this. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz, and um, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.